Sin Subcommittee meeting this morning, and thank you for uh, taking the time to come along on what could be possibly the hottest day ever we've witnessed. So, uh, and apologies, we can't get this room any cooler, but hopefully people will be okay. But if anybody does start struggling at any stage, there's water outside, we'll take a break from proceedings and, and make sure whatever happens, we all get through this in one piece. As always, we'll start with some quick introductions. I'm David Barker, I'll be chairing the subcommittee this morning. Uh, I'm flanked by the members of the subcommittee who are asked to introduce themselves. Good morning, I'm Councillor Abdul Bayoum, a member of the committee. Uh, Councillor Maru Ralph, uh, member of the committee. And sat behind me, we have. Uh, and you'll notice we also have officers of the council in with us today who will be assisting us through proceedings and making sure we do things correctly. Could I start and ask you to introduce yourselves, please? Yeah, my, my name's Paul Barber. I'm the legal advisor to the licensing subcommittee. And I'm Jane Goff from Licensing, here to present the report this morning. Uh, would, you, would you just like to introduce yourself as well? <laughs> yes, these, these meetings are webcast, as, as they have to be, as they are public meetings. So uh, we will be being recorded during these proceedings and that will be available on the Council's uh, webcast site. And could I just ask people to introduce yourselves, please, for the record? Yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is Ian Rushton. I'm the agent for the applicants today. My name is Rabwal. I'm the owner of the shop. I'm Steve Lee. I'm a local re resident representing neighbours today. Ruth Johnson, local resident. Good morning and again, welcome. We have a fairly straightforward procedure for these hearings, which is outlined. It was on page 150 of our pack, but you'll have a different one because we were hearing two cases, but it, but it is in there. Uh, and you will note at point four of that, that the solicitor to the committee will outline the procedure to be followed during the hearing. So that saves me reading it out. So would you like to outline the procedure, please? You'll have to forgive me, it's a, it, it is some while since I've done um, a licensing act um, hearing. Um, has, has everyone got a pack? Has everyone been given one of these? Just Join members it. and officers, I don't think. Yeah, not, not members of the public. Okay. Um, so, so, so the hearing um, it, it is what, what they call quasi-judicial. Um, the chair of the licensing committee um, will introduce the committee and ask officers to introduce themselves. You've already heard him do that. Um, the chair will also ask the applicants to formally introduce themselves again. Already been done. Um, and, and then it's my turn, it says, to outline the hearing procedure. So what we'll have, we'll have the licensing officer, sits in the corner over there, introducing the report. Um, questions concerning the report can then be asked by members and the applicant. The licensing officer will then, in turn, um, introduce representatives for the responsible authority and any interested parties and ask them to deal, detail their relevant representations. Now, as I understand it, um, we don't have any representations from responsible authorities um, or um, uh, any, any uh, sorry, Anyone from the responsible authorities, such as the police, are not going to be here today, um, but the interested parties, that being yourselves, the members of the public, um, will be able to um, detail your representations for the licensing subcommittee. And then again, like the members could ask questions um, of the applicant, the members could ask questions of anybody making those representations. Um, now, with leave of the chair, um, the applicant, or indeed his representative there, um, might ask questions, or might be permitted to ask questions, um, of people, the members of the public, the interested parties, as we say, who are making the representations. Um, the applicant um, will, will then be asked to detail his application, 
provide clarification of the application and respond to any representations made. And the applicant um, may then be asked questions by members, um, again, with leave of the chair. Um, the applicant will then be given the opportunity to sum up his application. The licensing officer will then detail the options and then there'll, there'll then be a private session for members to take legal advice and consider the application. Um, the decision of the committee will be given um, in accordance with the requirements of the Licensing Act and the regulations made there, there under. Now, just, just a couple of caveats. Um, at any time, um, while, whilst the meeting's in progress, the members of the committee might ask for legal advice. Um, that could be given um, in open session, but they might ask for that advice to be given in private. Um, and the hearing will be held in public um, in accordance with the appropriate regulations. Um, the committee can, however, determine that members of the public um, could be excluded. So, for example, if your behaviour gets a bit unruly, you might be asked to leave. Um, and, th and that, we, we, we're not expecting it to happen, notwithstanding the heat. Um, and that's it. So, over to you, David. Thank you, Alan. Basically, what that means is that everyone who's taken the time to come today will have every opportunity to put their case across to us and to ask questions of each other. And members will seek clarity from you on any issues that, that we're not sure about. And everything you say will be taken into account when, when we come to make a decision. So, if we move on, could we have the report then, please, Jane? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to come today. We know it's challenging in this heat, but thank you very much for attending. So, today's hearing is to determine the grant of the application for the corner shop 253 Glossop Road, Sheffield S10 to GZ. The applicant being Revoir Okrati, forgive me if I've said that wrong, who's here today with his uh, agent. The, applicant was, uh, the application was received by the licensing service on the 25th of May 2022 and is attached at, report, at Appendix A of the report. The consultation period has allowed a lot of time for residents and the applicant to have dis well, discussions or communication as such and there has been an agreement to reduce times already to, to 8am to 11pm daily, Monday to Sunday. Um, there's been additional conditions offered and agreed and also accepted by the applicant from residents with their concerns outlined, which you've seen within the report itself. Um, all associated correspondence backwards and forwards has been um, included in Appendix B of the report. Um, we did have further objections from Public Health and the City Centre Residents Association, which is changing chef. But following the agreement of the reduced hours, they were happy to, to withdraw their objections, so they have no longer uh, maintained their objections, so they're not here today. Um, other objections remained in place, and we've got two residents here today. We've got a number of other residents that have either sent their apologies or submitted a written um, submission, which I do believe has been circulated from Mr. Cadbury, Ashley. Um, that's already been... Uh, circulated for the councillors for consideration so they've seen his co further comments as he sent his apologies for today. Um, the applicant has made further compromises in terms of putting up CCTV. He has put a gate at the end of the path leading to the area where the residents are. Um, this hasn't been agreed so far, and obviously further discussion was required at today's hearing. And there's been concerns that the display on the windows were airing towards the shop, looking more like an off-license, so to speak, as opposed to a convenience store. Um, so the reasons for referral today, like I've said, we've got outstanding objections. Councillor Douglas Johnson was going to attend today, but he's had to send his apologies due to the heat. He said he, he wouldn't be able to come today but sends his apologies anyway. Um, so if I may skip to the appeal section, if I may, Chair, which is section eight in the report. The Licensing Act 2003, section 181 and schedule five makes provision for appeals to be made by the applicant and those making representations against decisions of the licensing authority to the magistrate's court. So the recommendations, Chair, today are that the members carefully consider the representations made any, and take any such steps 
as the subcommittee consider appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Do members have any questions regarding the content of the report at all? Does the applicant have any questions regarding the report? If not, then it's over to the interested parties. Uh, you, you may both speak and, and say whatever you, you, you wish to, uh, if you want to decide who, who goes first or whether one of you will represent both of you. But it's now your opportunity to tell the committee what your outstanding concerns are and just you have as long as you wish to do that. Um, thank you, Councillor. Um, my name's Steve Lee. I'm a resident on Joel Street around the corner from the proposed um, applic application uh, and representing not just myself, but uh, the neighbours, as you'll know from the correspondence that you've received, there's quite a lot of concern and feeling relating to this application. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that, you know, we do welcome uh, use of the, uh, uh, the vacant unit. Uh, however, um, we're a very close-knit community. There is a distinct change in the urban fabric as you move away from West Street and the city centre going towards Glossop Road and Broomhill, and we are residential. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, we have young families ranging in age from one-year-old children to eight, seven-year-old retirees with everybody in between, including school-aged children and teenagers. Um, and as I say, we would welcome the addition of a convenience store local corner shop but it's been evident since the application went in and this started to develop that this is to all intents and purposes intended to be a you know off license alcohol sales led retail unit um, and I think that if we hadn't sort of like raised this it would have just gone ahead as being a 100% off license open till two o'clock on a weekend and seven o'clock in the morning we know from previous experience that uh, alcohol abuse is a serious issue in the city centre and you'll be aware that um, Changing Chef, the residence group, has in the past attempted to get a cumulative impact policy uh, drawn up by the council for West Street, which has not been forthcoming despite endeavours over a number of years. Um, if I can refer you to, you mentioned my neighbour, um, Ashley Cadebay, who's done a lot of extensive research into some of the issues surrounding antisocial behaviour and alcohol abuse in the area. Uh, and if you had a chance to read his report, he noted that there is a considerable amount of reports of uh, violence, uh, sexual assault, etc., taking place at, um, at uh, licensed premises on and around West Street uh, and none hardly any, I think one at the West Street tram stop, at the sorry, University of Sheffield tram stop in the vicinity of the, uh, the applicant. Now, what he did was, if you notice this, he did, a, he did an analysis of uh, incidents that took place within an existing off-license bargain beers on West Street, on the corner of Fitzwilliam Street, and then also in relation to where the applicant's premises is, uh, and it's considerable, the difference, and what we have said uh, within that report as well is that we will continue to monitor that on a monthly basis and if we start to see an increase then we'll be looking for you to hold the premises to account. Now obviously they've made an attempt to, to do something about this by installing CCTV and putting a gate on but that only present, pre prevents theft from the shop. Uh, Mr Cadeby's research showed that whilst it prevents things like theft from premises it doesn't prevent antisocial behaviour. Uh, in the area. So that is a concern for us. Um, we're aware, obviously, that, like, you know, that this is a very, very difficult situation and that you can't sort of like preempt and sort of uh, you know, refuse a license based on what might happen in the future. But evidence does point to the fact that alcohol availability, especially cheap alcohol availability, especially in places where there are vulnerable people, will lead to an increase in crime and disorder be a threat, and, you know, threat to public safety and indeed public nuisance. Uh, I think in our reports we talked about the issues that we've had in the past. We've worked very closely with the uh, local uh, authorities, including the, um, the police, the neighbourhood police people. Uh, they recommended that we put gates on the alleyway, which serves as the rear of our properties. 
which we did, and we've seen a considerable reduction in the amount of antisocial behaviour. So we are, we, we would like to think that we can sort of maintain the, the thing we've got now, and obviously if anything does change, that will be noticeable. Um, I did just have a couple of queries on the actual application itself, if that's okay. Uh, reading the report, uh, as you've said, there's been an acknowledgement from the applicant to reduce the opening hours from 8 a.m. until 11 p.m. However, the application form is still, still has the original times on of 7 a.m. until midnight and 2 a.m. at weekends. So I wanted to clarify whether or not there was anything formal within those emails that if the application does go through, that, uh, that it won't just say, well, the actual application form is still, still says the original and that's what stands. If you could just clarify that, please. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, everything's documented in writing with agreement from the applicant through the agent as well and everything remains on, on file. We have to put the original application in there because that's as it stood yeah. and as it remains standing, if you like. Okay. Um, so although the actual physical application form shows the, it, it's the original essentially, which we have to include, but the actual documentation that goes with it and the correspondence remains on file in, write, in written agreement with the applicant or through email thread and everything. So that's, that is formal. Okay, thank okay. you. And it's in the report as well. Uh, I also, I also can I just add, and what, what will stand is the decision of the licensing committee today. The licensing committee will, will make a decision on those hours and those will be the hours it can open. And they may, I'm not saying they will, but they don't necessarily have to bear any resemblance to what's been applied for and agreed. It would be would be our decision, and that's what would happen going forward. So, what what it says in here doesn't isn't that important. Yeah. Um, I did I did also just have an inquiry, a, a query for the applicant themselves. So obviously, when the report came through, uh, I uh, just happened to look up uh, Mr. Ocrates on Company's House, uh, and there. Uh, uh, there is a, a Rebois Akati that also is a owner or director of two other properties in Sheffield, one on South Road and one on Middlewood Road. Can you just clarify whether or not that's yourself or is that a different person? I think it would be helpful if you could clarify that at this stage, just, just for the applicant's benefit. Yeah, of course, yeah. I can certainly clarify the South Road premises. Um, that was a, a licensed premises owned by Rebois. Um, with an alcohol license, which he then transferred the license. So he currently has no licensing responsibility for that premises. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the other premises. Can I just ask Rebel Ocran? Um, the, the two addresses in question are 272 South Road at Walkley and 228 Middlewood Road in Hillsborough. There is a reason for asking that question. I mean, first, first of all, uh, the one at uh, Middlewood Road is an accountancy office, despite the fact that it says it's AWAE -A mini market for selling food, but it's an accountancy office. But more significantly, the premises at South Road, which it says is retail in uh, non-specialised food, beverage and tobacco. Now, is, uh, yeah, I, went and I went and had a look um, just to see what sort of produce they sold to see if it is the same person, what sort of a convenience store we could expect. And... Obviously, one of the conditions of this is that it will be 20% alcohol-led and 80% dry goods or convenience-led. Now, 80% of nothing is still nothing. Uh, and I have to say that there was very, it was very sparsely stocked, the shop at South Road, uh, with very sort of like, you know, like lots of cat food, a couple of jars of coffee, and not really much sort of like in terms of like fresh produce, etc. And my concern is, is that if this is approved on this assumption that it will be 80% dry goods, that it's going to be a very, very poorly stocked shop if it goes down the same way as the one on South Road. So we would be willing to work with the applicants. So, you know, we, we can't guarantee that we'd shop there all the time every day, but if it had stuff that we wanted, we'd support the shop. But if it's just going to be somewhere that's got a few items on the shelves and then the rest of it is going to be booze-led, then we just could see quite a lot of problems, as I say, from sort of like vulnerable people thinking there's just somewhere to go and buy cheap alcohol. Uh, and I'm not really sure how, you know, we can go about that really, um, in terms of like, you know, what the regulations would be for, uh, you know, for, the, for the volume of, uh, of other goods and produce that's stocked in, in the shop. Uh, and it takes me back to my original point that it just seems to be a, you know, a, 
uh, alcohol-led off-licensing, you know, de facto uh, off-license. Um, you know, that's that's what we that's what we're questioning about, like you know, whether or not this is actually something that is a genuine attempt to provide a local convenience store that's a benefit to the community, or whether it's just you know nodding to tick the box to get the application through. Um, just to finish off, I mean, we're a residential area. We've said this already, uh, and you know, we, we we are unique within the city in that we're almost like a little country village, but within the city centre, we've got a very very strong community. We've got young children, we've got established um, retail and commercial premises, none of which is sort of like late night led. The, you know, we've got a d dining restaurants with licences, but they close at eleven, and we're just concerned that sort of like something that's for all intents and purposes to just attract people to buy, you know, cheap booze in the area is not the sort of thing that also like enhance the community, really. Uh, and that's that's why we've come to make a statement on it today. Thank you, that, that, that's really helpful. And the applicants will have a, a chance to uh, attempt to address those concerns when they, when they detail the application. Is there anything you would like to add to, to that? Uh, can I just say that 50% of the window is still alcohol adverts? Again, for are you happy now for me for me to just open this up to questions? Then you can, if, if you think of anything that you need to add, you, I'll give you the opportunity to come back at some stage. So, do members have any questions? Can I start with, with Councillor Murray? Yeah, sorry, um, just a few questions actually. Uh, sorry, what was your name? Mark. Yeah, Steve. Steve. Uh, Steve. Yeah, sorry, Steve. Um, so in. In regards to uh, you having lived there, I think quite catchy. How long have you lived there for? Uh, we've lived there for 16 and a half years. So my kids are now 17 and 12. So my son was one when we moved. Uh, and we're relative newcomers. There's, I think there's only two other residents on the street that have been there less time than us. So uh, other neighbours have been there for like 40, 30 years. Okay. So we're, as I say, we're, we're a long established community that look out for each other. And in regards to the actual community, how many how many households would you say are, are actually on Gel Street? There, there's, there's 10 in Gel Street Terrace, uh, the top eight of which are uh, owner-occupied, the bottom two of which, the second bottom one is a student property. Uh, however, those students this year have been really, really sort of engaged with the community and got on with everybody and attended events and whatever that we put on. And then the bottom one is a... Um, uh, it used to be a student residence, but it's now been converted into a, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, oh. Um, oh, come on. Uh, the bottom one, Regis, Regis Place. Oh, yeah, I think it's service department. Service department. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's, it's turned into service departments now. Just There is also, uh, above the applicant's shop, there is, it's called Westminster Chambers, and they are Victorian... Uh, they're actually they're effectively houses, but on top of the retail units below. Uh, and I think you did receive representation from uh, from uh, Miss Hammond, Crammond. Uh, they live directly above the premises, and they've expressed their concern as well. Um, so, uh, as I say, it is a it's a close knit local area with, as I say, you know, the annex, and we've got we've got everything from one year olds to eight to seven year old retirees living on the street and. I say I've got my own children there as well. No, I just want to push on that. What a point about children? How, how out of the ten households, how many would you say? How many children in total would you say live in, within those ten households? Uh, but yeah, we could. Uh, do you want? You can ask me. Yeah. Yeah. There's not just us in the area as well. There's lots of others down the bottom end of the street and on Victoria Street. There's a lot, a lot more residents that live there as well. Okay, but just in general, how many children under eighteen would you say? Uh, roughly. Uh, well, I, I mean, in our terrace, I can tell you exactly. We've got a, an 11-year-old, uh, 17 and 12, a 5 and a 2-year-old, a 1-year-old. Um, so of the eight owner-occupied properties, one, two, three, four of them have got young children in between the ages of 1 and 17. Thank you. No further questions at this time.
Thank you, sir. Just, just one question, just to just for clarity for myself, really. Uh, Steve, I, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, but I mean, in terms of your representation this morning, I'm just trying to get an idea of, I know you're here to represent a number of residents, but in terms of the custom, the wider customer base for the, for the, for the shop itself, what percentage would you say that, uh, are, you know, uh, is, is yourselves and your, your colleagues that, you know, being represented this morning? Well, I think we are, I mean, I mean, I've got to give it a five yeah. Sorry, sorry, what's the question again? What, what number of what, sorry? What's sort of, in terms of your representation this morning, yeah, and the people, number of people objecting, what percentage would you say are, uh, 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 are, are these people of the, of the sort of more overall, overall customer base of this shop? Yeah. Well, I mean, as we've, as we've said in our sort of like representations to the, uh, to the committee and to the case, we would all be delighted and happy. We'd welcome a, a, a you know, a community, a family-led led convenience store that maybe sold a little bit of alcohol. We haven't got a problem with that. Our concern is that it's predominantly alcohol-led. The advertising on the outside showed that. The application showed that. What we sort of like witnessed in the shop before it opened showed that. But, you know, I mean, people said that they'd welcome a bakery, some of us sold, sold fresh, pro fresh produce, etc. Now, we know it's a difficult time. Uh, it's close to the university as well. We've had a number of very popular stores closed in the area recently. There was a Sainsbury's across the road, across the, the dual carriageway at the University Tram Stop that closed down, unfortunately. We had a burrito bar called California Fresh that did really good sandwiches. That was that was really successful. However, there is a there is an Italian uh, bistro there called Appetito that's very well supported by the community. We know the owner very well. Everybody, I think, on the on our street goes in there for sort of uh, you know lunches, coffees, uh, dinner, several times a week. So if it's a if it's a place that sort of like sells the sort of thing that we're on and, and tries to be part of the community rather than sort of like being against us, then I think you could guarantee that you would get support from people to just like you know pop in and pick up essentials, etc., uh, as and when they needed them. Um, but you know, alcohol led, isn't it? No more questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I think you just about answered answered my question there. But it, but it, I mean, do, it sounds like you've got a really strong and active community, which is great. You've done a lot of work to keep that community sort sort of safe and and, and together. Do, do the other retailers in the area kind of join in? Do, do you feel that they're part of your community? Um, yeah, very much so. I mean, um, Ruth's family run the local pub. Um, we've already just mentioned about Appetito and Case that runs that. He's like, you know, very close, almost part of the community. We talk to him all the time. Uh, as I say, we did lose a number of places recently, but the, uh, the um, California Fresh Burrito place, we were very so like, friendly with the couple that ran that. Um, Novelli's, the, uh, the um, Indian, Sri Lankan, South Indian uh, restaurant there, neighbors go to that. We all go to that and use that regularly all the time, don't we, Ruth? Um, yeah, so all the the, the sandwich shop across the road, Delhi West, uh, the people that run them, we know them well. You know, so it's, it, like I said before, I think we are, for a city centre community, we're long established, we all look out for each other, we sort of like, we do birthdays together, we have events together. When lockdown was on, we did a lot of socially distanced uh, events in the back alleyway that we talked about. We go to the pub for birthdays, et cetera, all together. We meet at Christmas. So we, we've got an ongoing, constant community spirit within the area and all the low, as I say, all the local commercial enterprises or a lot of them are very much part of that uh, and have been historically really. Um, so like I say, you know, there is an opportunity for somebody taking this on as a, as a, as a, as a community led convenience store to be part of that. And like, like I say, we can't guarantee that we go in there every single day and stuff like that. And of course you would probably need something like, you know, a, um, customers from elsewhere, but it's something that, that if it was if it sold the right things and it wasn't sort of like alcohol led, that led to problems, then we'd we'd support uh, we'd support um, um, we would support Mr. Crattie's business, but we just as I say we just we're just very concerned that it appears to be predominantly alcohol led, and we're concerned about the type of uh, antisocial behaviour that that'll attract. Uh, and just finally from me. Uh, throughout this process so far, have you got the impression that the applicants 
are happy to engage with the community, w would like to, to work with you to, to make this successful? Well, well, I mean, this is an interesting thing because a lot of the correspondents did say that we hadn't been to speak to him at all. Um, now, the, the place has pretty much been shut. I think it opened for one day and a neighbour did pop in and have a quick look around. But other than that, it's been closed and there's been nobody around. And, like, you know, with all due respect to... Uh, to, to uh, Mr. Kratty, we, you know, we, we didn't know him from, from anybody else, really. Uh, it could have been anybody's. Uh, but obviously, once this all started, there was no reason why he couldn't have approached us either by popping a note through our doors to say, I want to meet with you. Can we discuss this? What sort of things, he, what sort of produce would you like to see in the shop? What would it make you happy? And we've not had any of that at all. As I say, I think it's just they were probably a little bit surprised that they'd come up against a closed community like ours in the city centre. I think they were probably just expecting nobody to make any representation and go through as a two o'clock license on the knob sort of thing, to, to be frank. Uh, and uh, as I say, it's only because we've kicked up a bit of a stink that we sat here today. Thank you. Those representations have been really clear and helpful. Do, does the applicant have any questions for the interested parties? Just one, Chair, if that's okay. Um, can I just ask the both residents, is there anything else, obviously you, you've seen some of the correspondence. Um, and I'll explain shortly, it is going to be a general convenience hall, and I'll explain that in a second. Is there anything else that you would like to see Remoir do to overcome your concerns here? I mean, I just, I just, yeah, I mean, obviously we've made our representation, we've expressed what we, we perceive as being the, the concerns in that it's, it's geared towards alcohol. And, and as I say, like, you know, what we've seen with the stock of the sh shop so far, uh, and also going and looking at his other premises at South Road, is that it doesn't appear to be sort of like anything that would be a, a convenience stop. You'd go and think this is a really, really nice place. And we've also like been in corner shops over the years, especially in the old days where, I mean, I remember when I lived in Walkley, my local corner shop there was just fascinating because they always had anything you ever wanted when you went in. Uh, and... You know, I think I think you need to look at like what sort of like successful convenience store stock, and it should be that when you go in, it screams like, "Oh, what a lovely!" You know, it's a nice local corner shop, uh, but you can get a bottle of wine there or a couple of beers if you need them. Not something where you go in and it immediately screams alcohol at you because the fridge is full of beer. Is there's, there's all, you know, um, uh, spirits behind the counter and so on, which is what it does currently. So. You know, and I don't know whether that's within your business model to actually be able to do that, um, because as I say, we've not seen any evidence of it so far. Um, but uh, you know, as I say, like going back to the beginning, we, we wel we'd welcome a community uh, beneficial, uh, convenience, produce-led uh, outlet. We just like, as I say, it's not. You know, we, we're not on the main drag. We, we, you know, there's a noticeable difference. If you've ever saw, like, on a night out walk to West Street. You go from the noise, the hustle, the bustle, and then as you get towards sort of like where the old Glossop Road Baths is, the top of this William Street, it gets quieter and quieter and quieter. And then when you turn into Jell Street, it's almost like going into a vacuum. It just goes really, really quiet. And as I say, our concern is that that will be uh, disrupted if we've got a late night, predominantly cheap booze led off license. Um, so they're, 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 you know, in answer to your, your question, was it Ian? Yeah, in answer to your question, you know, they're, they're the things, it's like, you know, the proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating. It's all right saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do this, this, and this, and then we go in there and eight, because 80% of nothing is nothing. Um, so, you know, and, uh, yeah, maybe that, like, if, it, if, if, you, if you open the, you have to trial certain things, you know, I mean, we all, we all appreciate that things like, you know, for example, a fresh bakery, you know, if people don't come in and buy the stuff, it makes it difficult to stock it. But if all of a sudden you find that you know, you, you, you're successful and you get a lot of students thinking they'll come in and buy things, then uh, on the way past to and from university, people walking to and from work up and down Glossop Road, like, you know, with the foot traffic, then that could be really beneficial for you. But, you know, something that complements the, uh, the, the, the surrounding area. As I said, the Sainsbury's, the Sainsbury's across the road apparently was per square foot the busiest Sainsbury's in the city according to the people that were there, and they were very disappointed. It closed because the university, I think, owned the lease and didn't renew it, and it's sat empty now. So that has really needed to be placed since then. That's like it's about a year since that closed. So something that a small local Sainsbury's type thing, or like you know, a small chain convenience store, sort of, but an independent, would probably be something that would, would be beneficial. Um, but yeah, so I think I think Ian, it's incredibly difficult to say until uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think as we said before, and as uh, as Mr. Cade said in his report, um, 
things like CCTV and gates and the um, uh, refusal book, etc., and Challenge 25, uh, they don't present uh, prevent antisocial behaviour. They tend to protect the business. Um, I think um, we've had experience at places with uh, refusal books before, and uh, if you've just got one person working in there late at night and somebody comes in, it's quite intimidating. They're not going to refuse them and write the name in a book. They just want to get them out of the shop door as quickly as they can. So... Um, Okay, thanks, Jed. Just one, I suppose one last question, uh, just for now. Have you had sight of the proposed operating schedule uh, and all the license conditions that Rep One has offered with the application? Um, so what is that? So as part of the, the application, uh, it's difficult to turn around. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, as part of the, the application, we proposed, uh, the agents who submitted the application proposed a comprehensive operating schedule which is basically a list of the rules and regulations that this shop would follow yeah. and adhere to. Have you had sight of that? Yeah, we've seen that. Is that the one which talks about things like a refusal and a, a balk? And yeah, we, we've, we've seen that. As I say, we, we, we've, um, I know we had some issues with bargain booths down the road as well, that that became an issue as well for them. And they, they were supposed to come. And I'm not saying that everywhere is the same, but as I say, experience of these sort of things in the past, that like it doesn't necessarily have the effect that you need it to. Um, I know you can't sort of like, you know, preempt what's, what's going to happen, but again, I think it still goes back to the thing that this is all about, so like, you know, what they're going to do in the event of hostile antisocial behaviour for people wanting cheap alcohol. I think Councillor Burroughs has a further question. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'll uh, start with you, Steve. Um, so if we take out this proposed Proposed off license. What's the? Uh, do you know where the closest current off license is to Gel Street? Yeah. Well, there are there are six off licenses already. Between, uh, I mean, the first one as you go down towards town is um, just is bargain bargain beers just past the top of Fitzwilliam Street, and then between there and the bottom end of West Street, there are six off licenses selling alcohol. Um, included, there's a premier store, a Tesco, uh, West Street beers, etc. Uh, they are, I mean, obviously, they're, they're off licenses. We've, we've of course, got the uh, we've got um, on licensed premises, including the previous mentioned bistros, restaurants, the Bath Hotel on Victoria Street, the Harley uh, across the dual carriage road on the corner of uh, Gloucester Road and Housefield Road. And just in regards to uh, bargain beers, do you know roughly how, how far that is from Gell Street? How many metres estimate? Uh, I think about probably about 200 maybe, two, 300, can I say. Beth, can just take you back to the comment on the report that um, our neighbour, Ashley Cadeby, did. He did an analysis of the number of antisocial behaviour and sexual assault reports that took place within 100 metres of that establishment. Uh, and I haven't got the figures in front of me now, but they are in the report, but it is considerable. And the number of cases within... 100 metres of the of 253 Gloucester Road, the application site is, I think, ze either zero or one at the University of Sheffield tram stop. So, like we said before, like, you know, we will be continuing to monitor these statistics over the coming months to see if there's any change in it and what they relate to. Thank you. I've got a uh, question for the applicants. Shall we let the applicants stay there? So if we then move on to the applicants, it's your chance to state your case and to address any of the concerns that have, have been expressed today and okay. in the correspondence previous to today. Okay, thanks, Tim. I'll certainly do my best. Um, I suppose just to, to confirm, this is it's a new business. Uh, the shop has been fitted out and refurbished to a good standard as a general convenience store and a grocery, um, which will sell a range of goods just to try to overcome any concerns by residents. It will be selling a range of goods, such as your everyday stuff like bread, milk, snacks, sweets, soft drinks, cigarettes, etc. Uh, it is going to be a grocery business. It's not a bargain booze type premises, which will be predominantly led. And we have offered a condition, to, again, just to try to allay some of the local concerns. So the the proposed alcohol sales would just be a part of the business, part of the day-to-day the -day convenience. Uh, it's not a shop that will sell 100% alcohol. Um, the shop will, you know, just to confirm, sell a variety of goods. 
Red One is, is committed to the, the business. He's taken out a, a lease for 10 years. So he plans on investing here and being here in the long term. And he, he wants to be a part of the local community. So it's good that Steve has said that he welcomes a new business to the community. You know, Red One, um, as a young man, he does want to be part of the local community and also an asset to the community. Um, so customers can come in and buy their day-to-day -day goods from his shop. Uh, it is a small shop. Um, if you look at the submitted floor plan, uh, as you walk into the shop, the sales counter is quite a long counter. It's on the left of the, the entrance. Spirits and cigarettes and exp expensive items like some champagnes and the expensive wines, they'd be kept behind the counter, and there's a condition confirming that. And the beers and wines will be located in a chiller directly in front of the counter. So the beers and the wines, they're well supervised by staff and can, can be easily supervised and you know, be aware of anybody coming in who wants to buy alcohol. There will be around two or three staff working different shifts in the shop as well as Red Bois. Uh, and you'd always make sure that the, the, stop, the staff, um, there was enough staff on duty uh, at peak times during the, the weekends and maybe into the, the evenings on a Friday and Saturday. Just a little bit about the, the applicant, Rebois. Uh, he has over 18 months experience of working in retail, including alcohol sales. Steve mentions another shop before, and I was going to mention that he, he does have experience in Sheffield of running a licensed convenience store uh, at the shop at 272 South Road. Rebois was the, the license holder there, sold alcohol, uh, but he's recently transferred the license to a new buyer, uh, and this is a this shop, this new shop on Glossop Road is now his, his new business and his main investment and his livelihood uh, moving forward. He's lived in Sheffield for four years. Uh, he lives around about a 10 minute car journey away from the shop. So he's getting to know the particular local area and he's, he doesn't live far away from the, from the shop. He has a, obviously he has a personal license uh, which was issued by Wakefield Council just over 18 months ago. So he will be the designated premises supervisor, the DPS, working here on a day-to-day -day basis. In the fact, he has a good, clean record, no issues on file or records such as any underage sales. Uh, he's got experience, he's a responsible person, uh, and he is more than able to run this shop with a premises license, we say. As you've heard, the original application submitted was for longer hours, licensing hours of 7 a.m. to 12 midnight, Sunday to Thursday, and until 2 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, however, you know, immediately following the concerns raised by uh, some of the, the objectors, the application, Redboard, immediately reduced the hours for alcohol sales. So the application today, as you've already confirmed, the application is for alcohol hours of 8 a.m. to 11 p.m daily. Um, the shop may open earlier for the sale of other goods uh, and after that, but the license today uh, it will be 8 o'clock to 11 p.m. that we ask you to consider. Um, we have submitted a detailed and comprehensive set of license conditions um, to promote the licensing objectives. I'm not going to plan to go through each and every one of them in great detail as you've got them in your bundle today. They're on pages 16 and 17 of your report. Just to highlight a couple of the conditions, um, CCTV will of course be provided. Um, it's a small shop, but there'll be four cameras inside the shop. They're already there because I checked them last night. And there'll be two cameras situated immediately outside the shop. So they will provide coverage of the, the main road uh, and also the, the alleyway to the left of the premises and the, the alley gate where the new gate has been fin fitted. Um, Recordings will be kept for 31 days in accordance with the police and, and best practice. And if there's any, any issues or complaints or allegations, then those images will be readily available to the police and to the council. Other conditions, including keeping a, an, an eye on the area right outside the shop to see whether any groups are congregating. Just to help the staff with that, there's a, a CCTV monitor which is being placed directly above the alcohol chill right in front of the the serving counter. So as a member of staff is serving behind the counter, the, the CCTV monitor will show him the images right outside the shop and to the, the left in terms of the, the alley gate. So they can see 
what might be going on outside, and if anybody is be getting to, to wait around. Uh, staff will be trained responsibly. They'll be receive regular training on the licensed conditions and the you know, best practice challenge 25. The shop will adopt challenge 25 to prevent any underage sales. Um, and Red One, with his experience, is aware of the importance of checking ID uh, for anybody that may look under 25 to confirm that they are over 18. Chair, we, we say the conditions are comprehensive, they're, they're thorough, and importantly, they have been accepted by all of the responsible authorities uh, in this application. Um, we've also added a, a new condition during the, the engagement with the, the residents. Uh, one of the concerns which has been mentioned today is about the, the initial thought maybe that the, the shop is going to be a predominantly led 100% alcohol. Well, that isn't the case. And just to try to allay some concerns by local people, uh, a condition has been offered to say that no more than 20% of the available shelf space will be for alcohol. Um, so we're trying to allay as many concerns as we can within reason. Uh, and we say that condition can be enforced uh, and it just demonstrates that the shop will generally be a convenience store. And the floor plan also confirms that because there's goods, there's dry goods uh, shown on the, the floor plan. In terms of the, the representations, I think firstly, Chair, uh, and, and it, it speaks volumes, uh, and it is significant today that none of the responsible authorities are here today to oppose this application. Obviously, you're aware that public health did initially have a concern, but they withdrew their complaints or their representation uh, after the licensing hours were reduced. So, in particular, the role of the police is important, is crucial. They are the, the main source of information on local crime and disorder, and they are satisfied that a license can be approved today. I have to say, they were also, um, as far as I know, they were also satisfied with the initial application with the later license. So the police have been consulted, and they are satisfied that we are taking the steps to promote the licensing objectives. Just to confirm, um, the other authorities, such as training standards, the licensing authorities, safeguarding environmental health, and they are all satisfied today that this application can be approved. However, Revoir he does understand that local people have concerns, and that is quite normal for a new license application, the fear of the unknown. Um, he has, you know, through his agents who submitted the application, Tony Clark, he has done a lot to engage and work with local residents. There's lots of correspondence to and fro and asking some questions, and you know, we've, we've tried to deal with some of the issues that have raised. Um, the hours are significant. Uh, the hours have, the licensing hours have been reduced, and I think that might have been certainly one of the, the main issues amongst the, the representations. We've offered the condition about the limiting the alcohol to no more than 20% of the shelf space. Again, just to demonstrate, you know, this is going to be a, a grocery um, selling just a little bit of, of alcohol. The signage has been updated, uh, and we've submitted a, a photograph of that. Um, there may be elements of alcohol advertising on there, but it does make it clear that it is going to be a grocery and there's, another, there's a wide range of goods uh, which are shown on the advert, which will be included in the shop. The issue during the, the engagements with the local residents and the emails, the issue of access to people's gardens at the side of the premises through the alleyway was mentioned. So again, straight away at his own expense, Revoir, he fitted the gate. Um, and there's also a camera which, you know, there's images will be shown in the shop if anybody is congregating around there. So the gate's been put in, uh, again, just to try to convince and allay any concerns by local people. He is trying to do everything that he can um, to overcome any local people's concerns. Some of the objections, Chair, do mention the other shops, and obviously we've heard that there may be some crime stats, you know, with other premises or nearby other premises. Just in answer to that, obviously any issues in connection with any other licensed premises, they can be reported and they can be actioned and dealt with by the authorities. We do have to focus on this particular license application today. Um, a number of people, again, within their representations have mentioned um, the volume of other shops and the, the need for another license. Again, Chair, just to confirm, you know, you'll be aware that that isn't a relevant consideration today. We say, briefly, Chair, that it's a, this shop with a premises license, well managed by a responsible personal license holder, 
isn't going to increase any local crime in the Soda. Now, Reb Watt will do everything that he can to prevent any problems from occurring. We'll leave it there for now, Chair, and obviously we'll, we'll take any, any questions that you may have. I know uh, Councillor Moore has a question, so we'll, we'll pass on to him to start with. Thank you. Um, I think you've answered quite a number of my questions. Um, just, um, just got a few more, actually. Um, can you tell me the exact location of the shop? Does it at any point border Gel Street? Yeah, so does it at any point border Gel Street, the shop? Uh, we've, oh. sorry, Ruth, we, I'm we can answer that if, if necessary. Two. I, mean, I obviously come into this process quite late, but I visited the site last night and I've been preparing today's hearing. I'm more completely familiar with all the, the names of the shot of the streets in the local area. Um, so yeah, if Steve was able to answer that, that would be great. I mean, first, first of all, I think this demonstration, one of the concerns that we represented was that come and talk to us, come and have a look, come and see how it actually affects us. And clearly they haven't even done that. Um, the way that it lays out is that the, the, the between Gel Street and Wilkinson Lane, so at the Gel Street side, we've got our front garden stroke drives, then the houses, then our back gardens, then the wall, and then the alleyway, which goes on to Wilkinson Lane. And the property in question is on the corner of Wilkinson Lane and Glossop Road. So the back of it overlooks Wilkinson Lane and the alleyway, which is our rear access that we talked about. Uh, which, as I say, you know, it's well used. It's used for people taking bikes in and out of the gardens and the, and the, the sheds, etc. So our concern is people buying alcohol in the shop and then going round the back alleyway, which is directly at the rear of our properties. You see, so if you can, it's, 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 we, our properties take up the whole block. So Gel Street is the front, Wilkinson Lane is the back that we back onto, and this property backs onto Wilkinson Lane. So we can see them from the, it's the rear of our houses, effectively, so. Thank you. Um, just uh, following on from that question then, um, in regards to this, uh, this gate that's been installed, did, I, didn't, I didn't quite catch it, has it been installed by the applicant? Yes, it has, Chair. Okay. Um, has the applicant sought permission to, from the council or local residents to install said gate? As far as I'm aware, Chair, there, there was no planning issues raised by the the fitting of the gate. Um, a lot of landlord has given permission for the gate to be installed. Okay. Um, and just in regards to actual residents accessing uh, that particular alleyway to get onto, um, onto Westry, are they still able to do that or is the gate locked at all times? Is it a fixed gate? Well, currently the gate is open. Uh, so on the photograph, the, the gate doesn't have a padlock. Moving forward, um, obviously, you know, we, we, are, we, we understand the, the local residents concerns the plan subject to the views of the local residents will be to have a padlock fitted to that and that each resident affected by the gate will be given a key so they can access the gate um, but keep the gate locked uh, with each resident having a couple of keys which Red Wall will provide and just to confirm has that been put in writing the gate has been put in I've seen the correspondence from Tony Clark to the licensing authority about the, the fitting of the gate We'd be more than happy to put that in writing after today, if that was something that you'd like, Chair. Uh, thank you, yeah. Can I just, oh, can I just say um, that maybe putting private on the gate as well, because if it's going to be open for I don't know how long, maybe private on the gate would help as well. And the other thing is we do get quite a bit of antisocial behaviour round the back of Wilkinson Lane already um, from drug dealing and we report it quite a lot and nothing gets done. So, you know, yes, I know you're working with the police, but as you know, we don't get any help with what's going off there already. Just on that point, Chair, first, the first part of the, the question, yeah, we're more than happy to have a private sign on there, that, that's all problem. In terms of obviously the, the complaints and the allegations of drug dealing, a 
again, with respect, that's probably beyond our control. Well, it is beyond our control. Maybe the, the actual location of the cameras might help because they are going to be cameras showing the, the alley gates and, and the, the path down there. So again, we can have images available. So if those matters are continually reported to the police, um, then if they need any assistance from, from Red Wall Shop, then the CCTV might assist the police in that respect. Yeah. Would you say the, that that doesn't happen anyway, even though we report it all the time to the police? Nothing gets done. Sorry, just, just to pick up on that. This, a, a few years ago, this was a significant problem. It was something that was happening. On a, we, had a, we had a period of time where this was going on frequently, and we did, we did do a lot of work with the local police community team, uh, and we did put measures in place with them, and it did move to another location. And roofs rise. We, I mean, I saw somebody openly dealing out the back last Sunday morning. Uh, and again, our concern is that with the event, because Ben Centre, uh, with the drop-in place, is just over the dual carriageway at the bottom of Wilkinson Street. Uh, in fact, one of the people who represented it from uh, 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 indicated that she worked there. And the concern is that if there's a ready, you know, if people know that they can come in, there's a little wall where there's some parking spaces beyond the house on Wilkinson Street, like in this outside, and they tend to go there and then walk back round and then walk up past your shop, you know, past the shop and onto Glossop Road. And I think one of the concerns is, is that if pe vulnerable people uh, know that they can come and buy drugs from somebody around the back wall there, and then walk up, and then there's cheap booze available to them, that it's a, you know, it's a bit of a dangerous cocktail, really. Uh, and that's, as I say, that is a concern. And you know, I mean, I, I appreciate the, the measures that they put, that they're proposing to put in place, but you know, as we said in our representation, this is one of the things that we'll be keeping an eye on and monitoring. Uh, statistics to see if it does bring about any further additional antisocial behaviour, and, and I'm sure that the CCTV would support uh, support that as well if it were to be to be required. Chair, just if I can just mention or try to respond to the issues around the police and, and, and drugs. I mean, clearly, I mean this, the application today is about the sale of alcohol, um, but certainly anything that we can do to help deal with any local issues, then, you know, the client as a responsible person, licensed, or that will we'll do that. Um, but the, I think the word cheap booze was also mentioned by Steve. And again, I think just to repeat, you know, this is not going to be a cheap booze type shop. Um, the smaller independent stores, they, they can't sell booze cheaply, as maybe the, the bigger Sainsbury's that maybe have a license going back a couple of years. And just again, repeat, Chair, the there is minimum pricing in place so that the shop can only sell alcohol at a level set by the government. So there won't be any cheap booze type here. And I think it's quite a, a little bit of speculation on behalf of, of Steve with respect to say that if there is any elements of drug dealing going on, then they can go and buy cheap booze from the shop. You know, we're, we're not a cheap booze type shop. It is a convenience store that will sell just a little bit of alcohol. But anything that we can do, uh, any reports that we see on Red Bar and the staff, cameras are there, uh, any incidents that they see involving any drug dealing or any antisocial behaviour, they will log it uh, and they also report it to the police. You know, they're, they're on your side. Uh, you know, they're a local business in the area. They don't want these problems near to them because that affects their business as well, Chair. If I can just briefly come back in on that. Sorry, Ruth. Just briefly, I mean, that, that, that's really encouraging to hear and I think one of the reasons why we're here more than anything today is to say, you know, we acknowledge that you're wanting to open this uh, this retail hour here, but we want you to work with us as a community. And what I want to, you know, what I, and, and I'm, I'm encouraged by what Ian's just said. I mean, he quoted, he said, it's a grocery selling a little bit of alcohol. Uh, and we've also like, you know, we, as we said, you know, obviously we could sort of like wash out and say, well, drug dealing's nothing to do with us, but we've proactively gone out and reduced that to the fact that like, you know, as I said, there was, tends to be more isolated incidents now. But what we're saying is, is that if this sort of thing starts up again and there is antisocial behaviour either because of or in spite of you know, drug abuse that is a result of alcohol, that, that you, know, you will be prepared to do something about it and that you, know, you will be part of our community and acknowledge that there's an issue here and, you know, and, and, and basically practice what you've preached to us here today rather than just get the licence then go off and just sell alcohol and like have a very sparsely stop shop so i think that's that's the point ian is that you know we hear what you're saying you know the proof of the puddings in the eating you know let's 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 go in and you know if you, if you do get a license today 
make sure that these things do take place and that you don't let us down. Now, just on that point, yeah, I know we're discussing here, but we're, we're more than happy with that. Um, as you said, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Um, we can sit here today and say there won't be any problems. We say grant a license today. There's lots of conditions on the license. Um, I'm sure Steve and the residents will have a, a close eye on the new business and how the alcohol sales are conducted. Again, moving forward, I know I spoke to Red Bull last night and he's more than happy to engage with the local community. It has been difficult, you know, Red Bull's had a couple of issues away from the business. Uh, he's not been there as much as what he would have liked over the last couple of weeks or months. But moving forward, he'll be there every day uh, and hopefully can get to know the residents coming into the shop a little bit better. And then if any issues do arise, whether they're connected to the shop directly or not, then he'd be more than willing to have that conversation and engage. Can I just say, um, if the intention wasn't for it to be predominantly booze, I know they've reduced it now to 50%, but it was 75%. So to me, it just looked like, and all the residents, it just looks like a booze shop. There's still 50% of booze posters and then little bits of food. So can that be changed? Certainly, we can have a look at that, Chair. Yeah. I mean, the silence has been changed from the original um, signage. Now, I think the condition about the 20% floor space is actually the, the enforceable license condition today uh, and the floor plan which is part of the application and becomes part of any license that may be granted that's also enforceable so the shop can't make the shop 100% alcohol um, so we, we have committed to that through our license condition So why have the posters in the window then? that are predominantly, well, 50% now. They were 75, they're now 50. Is there a need to have that then? Chair, I mean, on the, the advertising, we, we can discuss this with Red Bull, you know, after the session today. It has been changed. Um, it does make it clear that it is selling some groceries, including some alcohol as well. Uh, but the license conditions are there. I can discuss that with Red Bull after today's hearing, if that's something that may be possible. I think it does say we sell booze and a little bit of food the way the adverts are at the moment. Because uh, it seems the main... The licensing way. conditions will be clear that it's 80% non-alcohol on, on, on the shelves. That, that's what's been offered to us today. And there's an offer there to discuss after the meeting the, uh, the signage, which, uh, again, having looked at it, there is quite a big, uh, a big thing on, on alcohol. Uh, and also, I share your frustration around the drug dealing. We have issues all around the city, and all I can say is what I say to everybody, report, report, report. The more reports the police get, the more likely that they are to do something. And it also appears, you know, your local councillors have been supported with this application. Get them on your side. Get as many people on your side as well. And if you've got another business on your side in helping to address this, it can only be good. But I, say, I know the frustrations. They can't respond immediately to stuff. But if they've got... 30 outstanding reports and someone's going to be saying what are you doing about this you know the people that, that, that manage them can i just bring uh, abdul in? sorry because just there is just... actually a chance at the end for uh, interested parties to ask questions <laughs> of, I mean, the, uh, just, of the applicant just a very very quick point on the signage itself and that's like irrespective of what it's advertised that you know we are a conservation area so sort of like you know gel street and westminster chambers which are sort of like heritage key assets in the Hanover conservation area. So, you know, we've got the um, lantern style lampposts and everything. We have to get uh, planning permission, etc. if we want to prune a tree, for example. So it is quite strict. And I was just wondering whether or not there was any uh, regulation in place that the applicants have got to comply with for the, the vinyl window wraps, because they are quite garish and quite in your face and loud and not particularly in keeping with the conservation area. So, you know, my personal view would be like, I mean, I know we've debated whether or not there should be alcohol or grocery led, but I'd rather there not be any vinyls there at all, frankly. They sort of like make it look quite sort of like loud and obnoxious and like, you know, not particularly in keeping with the conservation area. And as I say, I know that we've had to get permission to do things like prune trees. So it just, I don't know whether or not there's a requirement for, for approval to be sought uh, for, for, for that sort of signage in a conservation area. If there was, I'm afraid it would be through planning legislation. It's certainly not part of licensing. And one of the bizarre things is planning and licensing doesn't always meet nicely in the middle somewhere. It's very, very different legislation. Thank you, Chair. Just a couple. Uh, again, just for 
Well, just for clarity, I know in the beginning that there was an agreement to reduce the hours for the sale of alcohol. Uh, is that the same hours as opening, or is it still opening longer than, than the hours that it's selling alcohol for? The original plan, Chair, um, the, the shop is likely to open at 7 a.m. for the sale of other goods, and we'd like that flexibility to open earlier than the sale of alcohol would begin. Uh, and also, even in the evening time, again, just to allow some flexibility for the premises to see if there's a demand for the other goods, the alcohol sales would finish at 11. Uh, but then the shop might like to open a little bit longer just to sell the other goods, but all the alcohol would be screened off and not available for sale. Thank you. Yeah, you've partly answered my next question then. Um, so obviously you've, you've got some time on either side of the opening hours where alcohol sale is, it won't be allowed or it, it, won't, be, it won't be sold. Um, I, I'm, I'm just by past experience in other premises, I know that during the period when the alcohol is not allowed to be sold, is covered up by some 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 curtain or or a shutter or something. How does uh, how does your client uh, sort of propose to do that, and how do they propose to propose to cover it? Yeah, in exactly the same way, uh, councillor. It will be screened off. It'll be, it's covered currently. Uh, there's a, the chiller in front of the counter is right close to the counter. It will be covered up, uh, and the licensing hours will be made clear to customers. We put a sign up on the window uh, telling people what the licensing hours are, uh, but it will be screened off to make it clear that there's no alcohol sales beyond the permitted times. Okay, um, the next question, obviously there's been quite a bit of concern expressed about the, the percentage of alcohol currently being noticed in, in the store, etc. Uh, so with this 20-80% um, uh, display uh, of, of goods, Again, how does your client propose to, well, how is that 20% of alcohol display determined first? Is it by, you know, the, the, um, the, the length of the, uh, of the shelf that's used or, and how will that be maintained? It's, it's a good question. I mean, we normally look at this on the available shelf space, looking at the measurements of, of each and every shelf and then just coming up with a percentage of that. Uh, what we plan to do on that, I said, we've offered that condition to overcome any potential concerns. So it's regulated by the licensing committee. Uh, it can be a difficult condition uh, to administer, uh, but what, how we'd like to do, we wanted the condition there to demonstrate the commitment <coughs> that it is going to be a convenience store. And I think also moving forward, subject to the outcome of today's hearing, then we would invite the licensing authority and just to help us make sure that you know, they're satisfied with the measurements that we made. So th th there's, no, there's no further issues moving forward. Um, but again, the, it can be a difficult condition looking at percentages, um, but we wanted that condition to be proposed to overcome any concerns that it was regulated and that we're not going to be a 100% alcohol-led business. It is, it is a grocery. Thank you, Chair. Any questions? I don't think there's a lot less to ask now, but uh, I'll have a go anyway. <laughs> so just, just one thing you mentioned there. You said you've got the CCTV, etc., so you can pick up if people are congregating outside. If they were, how would you respond to that? Would you see that as a responsibility to do something about that? And, and if so, you know, without putting yourselves and your staff at risk, how would you actually try and address that situation if it, if it arose? Very diplomatically, Chair, because you know this applies to every licensed business in the, in the UK, in the country. Um, if the, the staff training that we will provide, there will be an, an element of risk assessment uh, on that. If they see something which is clearly a violence issue, you know, either close to the shop or outside the shop, then you call the police uh, and you log it in the incident book and you keep your images available and you keep the images in case there's a need for them to be revealed to the police. If it's just a couple of, for example, local 17-year-olds maybe just hanging around close by, then again, the Redbor has experience. You, you speak to those politely. You just explain, you know, that we don't want you to hang around the shop. It can cause an issue. And just politely ask them to move. Uh, nine times out of ten, that kind of works. And then just keep a record of that in the shop. So again, everyone is a little bit Every case is on its merits, uh, depending on what the, the case might be. If they see something, the staff will be uh, trained how to, to deal with that in the appropriate way. The appropriate way will depend whether it's a serious issue, uh, whether it's just a couple of local people hanging around and that they can be politely asked to move. Uh, 
if any problem persists or if there's any type of abuse or threatening behaviour, then you would call the police, uh, have your images available and keep a record of that log in the shop. Uh, just finally for me, what, what's the appeal of this, this particular location? Why, why this shop in, in this area? Yes, yeah, I, I can answer that. Um, I said, didn't meet Rev walked in the shop yesterday. He feels it's a good opportunity. Uh, he has sold his previous licensed business uh, and was looking around for an opportunity. Um, the deal with the, the landlords was a good one. Um, it looks like a nice area, a nice residential area with some passing trade. And he, he thinks it could be a nice business to, to operate and hopefully do well at. Thank you. Now... It's the opportunity for the interested parties to ask any questions. Do the interested parties have any further questions of the applicants? Can I ask uh, what your client base between 11 and if you stay up until 2 in the morning, what you think it's going to be? Yes, Jeff. Uh, I said the, the flexibility for the opening hours uh, is just to see whether there's, there is a demand for people to buy some soft drinks, some um, some late night bread, milk, groceries. Uh, a lot of shops now after the pandemic have opened a little bit later for the, the essentials. Um, so again, there might be a local resident might just need a late night bottle of milk or something. Uh, it's just to see whether there is a, a market for something a little bit after 11 o'clock. It may be that Revoir decides you know, moving forward that there isn't a, a demand for this, the sale of other goods after 11. But just to have the flexibility to assess that, uh, but the alcohol sales would clearly finish at 11 p.m. Any further questions for the applicants? I've got one, Chair. Hi. Um, just a question about the alcohol that you're going to sell. Have you considered the strength of the alcohol you're going to sell is it going to are you going to be able to sell high strength alcohol which is obviously appealable to street drinkers in the local area that obviously are an ongoing issue on West Street already I appreciate you're further away from that area um, or are you planning on just the normal strength every day stuff you get in Tesco for example or what have you just wondered if that had been considered or whether that was something you were bearing in mind Thanks, Jade. I mean, the, the shop will sell a, a variety of alcohol products. Uh, it may include a small amount of stronger beers uh, just to test the market and see whether any persons want to buy a stronger beer. So certainly at the start of any license, if it's granted today, they would look to sell just a small variety of beers, which may include uh, a degree of some stronger beers. And if there are no further questions for the applicant, you have the opportunity to sum up your application. We, we, we say to the panel today, and also to the, the local residents who, who've, who've turned up today, we want this to be, you know, Revoir is keen to make this a nice little shop uh, that just wants to sell alcohol no more than 20%. Um, there are powers to deal with antisocial behaviour in the area, and clearly the, the police who are crucial in that role, they're satisfied that this application will not undermine any of the local crime and disorder figures or the licensing objectives. We ask you to give considerable weight to the fact that none of the authorities have got any concerns about this application. Uh, Revoir will do everything that he can within his control uh, to promote the licensing objectives. Um, a couple of phrases have been mentioned by, I think, Steve, that the proof is in the pudding, and I, I completely agree with that. Now, if a licence was granted today, uh, then if there are problems moving forward and there's clear evidence of, of any issues with this shop or about any shop you know, nearby, then local residents have the right to request the licence review if there's evidence of problems. We say that's unlikely, although it is like a, a safety net for local residents to use that, uh, but to use it in, the, in a reasonable way. Um, the shop did have some temporary alcohol licences for a month or so, 28 days, uh, which were used. Um, 
their licenses, I believe, went until 2 a.m. the weekends, and we're not aware of any particular problems in terms of crime and disorder that happens during that period. Um, so again, we'd ask you to have consideration to that. Uh, Revoir is aware that if a license is approved today, uh, that he must comply with the license conditions or he'll face legal action or possibly a, a license review and have to come back here um, and face the panel again. So obviously it's in his interest to, if he is licensed, to comply with all the conditions and just run this business in a responsible manner. Uh, I will say just on a legal issue, Chair, the word evidence is key today. And again, your legal advisor will be aware of that. Um, this case law on the evidence and the, and the guidance of paragraph 943 mentions about evidence and the evidence base. We say, Chair, that the, the license conditions that we proposed are capable and will promote the licensing objectives. Um, and the objectors have the burden to show the opposite, uh, and they have to show that with any evidence. And again, a lot of the concerns which has been mentioned today are maybe some fear about what may happen and some speculation, you know, if a license was granted. Uh, but again, there's, there's no physical or hard evidence we say has been provided today. Having said that, Redwall will want to work with and engage with local residents because they are going to be, hopefully, his day-to-day -day customers. So he wants to work um, and make sure his business doesn't cause or contribute to any problems that may be in the area. Um, I think we have taken on, certainly Redwall has taken on board a lot of the comments that have been made over the last five or six weeks. Uh, lots of emails between the agents uh, and the, some of the local residents. He has tried to do everything that he reasonably can to overcome those concerns, Chair. Um, finally, the license conditions are there, they're on the record, uh, they're, they're comprehensive, they're detailed, and we ask you to approve the application today with the licensing hours of 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Could we have the options then, please, Jane? Certainly can, Chair. So the options available to the committee this morning, well, this no, this morning still, but we've gone to this afternoon, uh, is to grant the premises license in the terms requested, to grant the premises license with additional conditions, or to reject the whole or part of the application. Thank you. Could I ask uh, you now to, to leave the chamber whilst we take legal advice and come to a decision? And if you're able to stay around, as soon as we've come to that decision, we'll invite you back in and, and tell you what that is this morning. If you're not able to stay around, then we'll ensure it's, it's communicated to you as soon as we can get that communication. I forgot to check the cameras have been switched off. <laughs> We're deliberating there. But thank you ever so much for your time and your representations this morning in this ridiculous heat. The decision of the licensing committee, subcommittee, is to grant uh, as applied for, obviously, with the additional conditions that you've volunteered. We, we feel you, you've made an effort. We feel you've got the potential to be an important part of that community. I'm sure, uh, Renoir, that you will work with the local community to make that a success. And obviously... We don't want to see you back here, but I'm sure those residents will bring you back if, if, if things don't work out. But I, I've, we've no reason to doubt that. We think you've demonstrated by the conditions you've volunteered that you wish to be responsible. And we wish you the best of luck with that business. We hope it does well and that in 10 years' time, you're looking for another 10-year lease because you're making that much money. You, or you may be retiring then, you'll have made that much money. But uh, thank you for your time and representations. That's the decision of the committee this morning. Uh, because they've got what they asked for, and I suppose there isn't any right of appeal? No, I'm saying we're not going to see it again for another 10 months, Chair. We are. Right. There's only a right of appeal for these types of calls. So thank you ever so much, and thanks to uh, members and officers who stuck it out in this heat today, and uh, good luck getting through the rest of the day. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>